Hi, I'm Harry Geller, entrepreneur in residence at University of Maryland, and I'm here to present Quick Scaling Your E-Commerce Business. I uh, came up with a presentation of um, using innovative ways, um, uh, products that you can find uh, very easily online to quick scale your way to entrepreneurship. Uh, and I primarily focused uh, on e-commerce. So um, pretty much everything I'm going to present here uh, are things that either I've tried uh, or students or professors that I've worked with have used or my kids have used. So uh, all these are uh, tried and, and tested methods. So. So that is me. These are some of the things I've done. I've called myself an entrepreneur. I've had um, three or four very large companies that I've exited from successfully. Uh, I am a University of Maryland graduate. I went to the business school and graduated in May of 1981. Also went to uh, graduate school. It wasn't the Smith School at that point, but in 83 and 84, and I never finished my graduate degree because I started a company and it took off, so that was that. Was that. But uh, Maryland has always been uh, very dear to my heart, and it's, um, aside from my financial successes, really one of the greatest things I did was come back here and you know work with students and professors. It's really, really been an honor for me. So I'm also on the board of trustees, and um, happily here as an entrepreneur at uh, UM Ventures. So, uh, quick scaling a product-based business. So, if you're going to start a business, you're going to need to incorporate. You're going to get your IRS employer number. Your, you need a web address. You need a business bank. You need to set up payment systems. You need a credit card. You may not need one right away, but you'll need one. Uh, you need sales channels. Web services. You have to worry about inventory, warehousing, shipping, accounting systems, social media presence, marketing, and returns management. So in the past, this could take months and $50,000 to, and I'm talking in the real past because I'm showing my age here, but um, these were all fairly difficult tasks. All this can be done in one day now. You also have to worry about trademarking your name, your website development, your logo, prototyping a product, your sourcing of uh, who's going to manufacture the product, fundraising, and initial market testing. And all this can be done in two to three days. So why e-commerce? So there's a lot of statistics. I'm not going to read each one of them, but um, it's pretty telling where the market's going, particularly the retail to e-commerce market. It's um, you know very strongly trending towards e-commerce. So um, I thought uh, one of the interesting things I'll touch on in a little bit, but smartphones account for 61% of the online retail site visits. So that's a very telling trend. And again, uh, e-commerce is, if you have any kind of product-based business, it's where it's going. Uh, so e-commerce trend. So again, uh, the biggest e-commerce trend is the con continued importance of mobile devices because everything's going to be ordered off of mobile. and. You know, where you're concerned, the web design must be in a pro mobile direction. So you have to be user friendly with mobile. And uh, that's really one of the big trends I see. Another trend is China initially started out as just really, if you wanted a, those water bottles um, sourced, you would go to Alibaba or a, Ch a Chinese manufacturer and uh, have it created. And, you know, it's a pretty seamless. Um, process, but really, uh, uh, particularly China and internationally, they've become between Alibaba, Tmall, and Wish, they're probably two-thirds collectively the size of Amazon. So they're, you know, really a force to be reckoned with as well. So 
any operations you design in the future really needs to be tailored towards the international market. And then uh, direct connections with consumers, uh, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Uh, a very interesting statistic is uh, Nike expects 90% of their growth in the next 10 years to be not from uh, retail, you go into Dick's Sporting Goods and buying a Nike t-shirt, but their uh, direct interaction with you, uh, Nike to consumer. So they really see that as the big trend. So that's you know something you're going to need to plan for. Okay, so um, again, I, I tailor this more towards if you have if you've invented or have an idea for a product. And you know, a lot of these principles could work if, if you have a software business or even a consulting business. You, know, you can use the same things, but I sort of kept it to products because um, um, Alex is working on a product and you know, my, my kids have done it, I've done it, and so um, you know, I've stuck with what's, what's tried and true at this point. So uh, develop a prototype. So really, the next key step is to validate the market, uh, you know, who your customer is, what problems are you solving, uh, real important uh, people, are they willing to pay for a product? So Alex is a student here, and he had a product, uh, he came to me a few weeks ago, and what did I assign you to do? <laughs> you told me to make sure that people would pay for it, and right. uh, go out in the field and, and really test it and see uh, what the reaction of your potential consumers are. And, Right, so what did you do? So, uh, me and my friends came up with an, uh, a kind of a unique uh, alcohol product um, to, like, to drink and have fun. Um, so, we went out to opening day for the Orioles and went out to tailgates and walked around and uh, handed out a quick prototype of our, of our product and asked people if they liked it, if they saw this professional made in the liquor store, would they buy it, and then how much would they buy it for. And we got a, little, a lot of positive feedback. Um, and a lot of data that we could use to then find our price points and stuff like that. Right, you had hundreds of, of contacts with people. Yeah. So, you know, again, you know, when you're validating something, you know, don't talk to your husband or girlfriend or your mom or your best friend. You know, go ahead and talk to people that don't have any vested interest. And, in. you know, ask them just a couple questions. You know, is, is this something you would buy? What would you pay for it? In Alex's case, what sort of flavors do you like? Mm -hmm. But, you know, just keep it simple. But that'll give you... Um, because at the end of the day, you could have the greatest product in the world. If no one wants to buy it, you're not going to get very far. So that's really the key point. So, you know, again, test, testing your assumptions, you know, particularly with products, uh, pretty much whatever you come up with is already out there in some form. So, um, uh, you know, what are you? Are you bigger? Are you better? You're faster? You're cheaper? You know, what is your value proposition? And then, uh, you know, initially, uh, scale it in a, you know, in a small way to version 1.0 because if you look at the iPhone now, this is what, version 12, so, you know, you'll iterate over time and, you know, but you don't need to get too tied up into having every feature in the world in your product 1.0, just get something out in the market and see how it works. So, you know, basic quick scaling uh, steps in uh, sort of a circular graph. You, know, you sort of separate out uh, the, the three areas, legal and overhead, uh, sales and production, and marketing. So specifically, uh, legal and overhead, and I, I might have missed some, but you know, this, this pretty much covers it, um, uh, these seven or eight steps. Uh, company Stripe Atlas, which some of you are aware of, you, they can do every single one of these things in uh, a bit, takes about an hour online and it costs five hundred dollars. And um, GoDaddy off, offers something si similar. So does Incorporate.com. Uh, if you want to trademark either you know your name or your product, um, the, uh, the the patent and trademark office has a pretty good website where you can do a lot of interactive searching and work on that. And um, Brex and Square are very good payment systems. You can set those up right away. So, you know, these are all um, ones that I've tried out or people I've worked with have tried out and they work pretty well. Sales and productions, you know, a first step right away would be Shopify, which will sort of sell up, uh, set up your um, 
you know, your mobile uh, website for order taking, and they usually Shopify links to all these other ones. You know, Amazon is the category killer that everyone uses, and you know, me as well. One of my companies, probably ninety percent of our sales channel is Amazon, and um, you know, uh, again, all these uh, sites too. You should just, if you're interested in doing this, you should spend a little time on them. And uh, particularly Shopify, they have thousands of tutorials on how to do this, how to do that. I, I sort of stumbled upon it a year ago and spent a lot of time doing it. It's, it's a great website. You know, Wish, eBay, and Jet are also great sales channels. Uh, Zentail, which was founded by a University of Maryland student of mine eight years ago, they can manage the whole sales process of all these uh, systems. They're up in Columbia, Maryland. So if you get a little traction, you know, you can look to have a third party manage all of this. Um, ShipStation uh, is a, if you're shipping out of your house, that's a good company to use. And if you, if you uh, also are successful and want uh, someone to handle your inventory and, and ship the stuff out from order, ShipBob would be a good company. So these are all ones I've tried and they've worked pretty well. Uh, and Sales production, um, you're going to need an accounting system, so QuickBooks or Xero, and there's tons of other ones out there. These are two I've used. Uh, prototyping, uh, Terrapin Works has a rapid prototyping uh, facility where they can do work pretty cheaply and it's pretty effective. I've used them to prototype uh, uh, the 3D printing, some, some of my sporting goods uh, company works I've had, and they've worked really well. Um, Alibaba also, it's worth spending time on them. And for the most part, some people are a little nervous about um, sending money or intellectual property over to China, but I've never had a problem with anyone I've used at Alibaba. I mean, I've had, I've had quality problems with some people and you may have to, to um, work that around a little bit, but uh, for the most part, I think they've been pretty good. And you know, other prototyping, you can just do a, a basic Google search and come up with hundreds and hundreds of product prototyping companies out there. Um, Returnly is, you know, if you sell products, you're going to get returns. And again, if it's on a larger scale, a company like Returnly can manage that whole process for you. What do you, what, in general, what do these companies ask in return? Um, Share of your... No, no, usually you have to pay them. Sometimes it's a subscription. Um, you know, uh, Zentail will charge you per product shipped out. And, you know, again, if, if it's small scale, you can do it yourself. But once it gets bigger scale, particularly if you're a professor or a student or you have a, another profession, you don't want to manage this, you know. So it, it'll be a, a charge. But, you know, again, like fulfillment by Amazon, which I'll go over in a minute too, you know, they charge you. But then when you weigh in what it, you know, your, your uh, hourly wage that you have in your own head, it takes you an hour to fulfill 10 products, you know, and you value your time at $100 an hour, then that's, you know, $10 per product, can Amazon do it cheaper? You know, when you're doing one or two or three a day, it's not a big deal, but as, you know, you'll see in a few minutes, I've had companies where we started with one or two or three a day, and then it was a thousand a day, and then that's a different story. So, um, so for marketing, um, 99 Designs, which, uh, you know, I've used a lot for logos, fiber is another company you can fiber sort of uh, it, it started out originally where people would do certain tasks for five dollars so it could be you know I need you to convert a uh, Adobe spreadsheet into an Excel spreadsheet and someone would do it for five dollars but now it's it's come you know it's it's come more about sourcing for really any kind of um, you know design work or anything like that you need uh, you know, go, websites, GoDaddy is a good one, uh, Squarespace is excellent, uh, social media presence, you know, we, I've had a lot of luck with Facebook ads and Instagram ads, you know, there's other ones out there, and um, for SEO Marketing is a company, Web Mechanics, we use, uh, uh, one of the sales managers there is a former student of mine, they're in Columbia, and they can manage the whole process for you, you know, again, as you get a little bigger. So uh, Amazon, you know, for the most part, your first sales channel will be Amazon, um, you know, uh, University of Maryland, and pretty much any of these uh, other websites like Shopify offer you AWS credits, so you shouldn't have to really pay for any web services in the beginning. <laughs> um, 
you, know, you can list your product on Amazon and fulfill it, in other words, package it and ship it out yourself, or you can send Amazon product and they'll list it and send it out for you and charge you a fee. It's usually about 25% of what you're selling it for will be charged. We have, we have a, a sporting good product that we sell for $12.99 and we get about $9 out of that $12.99 that we sell it for from Amazon. And you know, two of those dollars would have, we would have spent ourselves shipping it out. So it's a pretty good deal. And then um, once you uh, grow in Amazon, you could become you know what's part of Seller Central where you send them large scale uh, skid loads of product and then they put it in their robotic uh, fulfillment area. And then if you, uh, Amazon will use their analytics. If you're selling enough of the stuff, they will just pre-buy it all from you. They'll buy a, a skid load, they'll buy 10,000 pieces of your product and then they'll set, they'll set the price themselves, send it out and that's called Vendor Central. So they're all you know different and they're all step up scales depending on where you start with it. Uh, fundraising, so if you want to do crowdfunding, which is, you know, a lot of people kick in a little, uh, there's Kickstarter and Indiegogo, there's a few other ones. Um, Kickstarter is more for products, Indiegogo is more for art projects. Um, Circle Up is a um, sort of a, a crowdfunding where you will apply to them, they will go to uh, micro venture capitalists and raise money for you and probably take a percentage of it. Uh, Fundable does the same thing. Cabbage is a, uh, I've never used Cabbage, but it's, um, you see their ads on TV and um, they're strictly loan based. So I don't, uh, I know people have used them, so they're, they're pretty good. So you would have to explore that. So some real examples, uh, I was one of the inventors and owner of Grip Boost, which is a polymer that recoats football gloves, invented uh, primarily by a football player here at Maryland and a couple engineers. And um, our initial product was just a sticky gel that recoats football gloves. And uh, we now have 15 SKUs, including our own football gloves, our own golf gloves, uh, baseball gloves, different gels for different sports. So um, again, our, we do about a million dollars a year, maybe a little bit over, uh, primarily through Amazon. We are now starting to look at other sales channels because we feel we're close to maxing out on Amazon. But um, uh, so in our third year, uh, again, we started with one product and we, you know, as we got into the market, we saw that uh, there was a need for these other products. So you just sort of keep iterating over time. So again, we're up to 15 SKUs now. Uh, another professor here, Professor uh, Cow, um, invented a, um, a, an aging cream that reduces wrinkles and it's, um, not, it's, it's actually patented and it uses a um, you know, special blue dye that she originally invented for uh, children with progeria and uh, to try to make them look younger and found that it, it um, worked on uh, people's skin as well. So we uh, worked with her here, uh, helped her find a CEO and this has all been done in six months. Uh, they launched about three months ago. They already sold out of their first round and they have three, three SKUs and they're looking to expand it. And they're uh, primarily through Amazon as well. Uh, my son, when he was 15, this is sort of what gave me the whole idea for this presentation. He uh, came up with a replacement part for golf bags that you couldn't find commercially online. And he um, launched it in three days using a lot of these uh, examples that I gave you. He sourced it through Alibaba. He put less than $1,000 into it and had $3,500 in sales just out of his bedroom in about six months and before he went to college he sold it for a couple thousand dollars. So he had um, good success with that. And then my younger son is pictured here, Will, he saw what my older son had done and they uh, like trail mix but they hate raisins so he came up with a no raisins trail mix and uh, again sourced it, did all the uh, uh, steps that I've outlined, 
less than two thousand dollar investment is bar mitzvah money and um he did fifty four hundred dollars in sales in his first year he sold it too because he's going to college so again these are just real life examples of people who just you know out of their bedroom you know start companies with ideas so here's sort of a key tools summary uh, of everything i said so again these are um my suggestions of where to go first to start but they're certainly not the only ones out there there's other ones these are just ones i've used that i've had success with and um for you guys to take the least path of resistance this would be a great place to start uh what i didn't cover is you know sometimes you'll start a business and you need like alex you might you're digging in because you're dealing with alcohol you have other concerns mm -hmm. with you know permitting and licensing uh, everyone needs insurance you have to pay corporation fees and most of these websites that you sign up they'll send you reminders your you know state of Delaware or whatever wherever you incorporate uh, taxes are due or your incorporation fees are due and pay your taxes so that is pretty much it <laughs>